I've had a crash and what happened was one of the propellers came off and went one way and the quad flipped over, landed upside down, broke off the antenna connector off of the board. Off of the board here, so um, all that was left was the circuit board, the traces were broken off, and basically the uh, barrel here that that uh, stays with the antenna and and this uh, SMA connector came off together so um, I've been down for a while and I haven't flown for this quad probably for nine months so I've finally got around to trying to repair it and uh, what I've done is I have soldered this back on we can get this in focus. I've soldered this back on, and you can't see it probably, but soldered it back on and got it electrically to work, where I could actually see uh, see the first person view using the goggles, um, which was great news. Um, it wasn't the first try. Uh, I had to do some micro surgery uh, and. Uh, basically adding a tiny jumper wire, a bare wire from the center pole of this um, SMA connector over here into the into the board to pick up the trace because it was basically torn off. Once that worked I went around this um, SMA connector on three sides which is all I could reach with epoxy so there's I don't think there's any way that's gonna break off again and if it does it's gonna break the circuit board of the video transmitter which you can see here as which you can see here as the bottom board right there is the video transmitter board and then uh, piggybacking on top is this little daughter board so while this is all part this is an opportunity I can actually show you how I made this I1 Extreme into an FPV machine so this is a 5.8 gigahertz 200 milliwatt uh, transmitter board and you can't see it that way but on the top there's another board and I've got a couple of poster board uh, pieces of poster board in here for spacers so that air can circulate through because these components do radiate some heat and stacked on top of that is a if I can turn this around is a 3.3 volt Beck battery eliminator circuit that I, that I designed and the efficient, this is the little label I made input is 2 to 6 S LiPo, outputs 3.3 volts 1 amp and at a typical 2 S input like this uh, I1 Extreme the I think the loads around 150 milliamps, the efficiency is 86 percent so I just put some some uh, efficiency numbers on here just to kind of document it and um, so basically this Beck takes the 2S voltage through this connector uh, as an input and it outputs 3.3 volts to the uh, video transmitter board and then on this side I've got uh, well on this side I've got channel selection so 16 channels I think or 8 channels I guess it would be 8 channels uh, and uh, on this side I've got a 3-pin connector for the video input from the Mobius so it can be transmitted. So this sits this sits on top of the i1 basically like this and so I've, I've located the antenna in the center of the quad so that it misses the propeller arc and I liked it vertical like this because now the top of the antenna is is um, horizontal which is the best orientation for signal strength and it is good in pretty much all orientations because in FPV the quad is not going to be angled much I'm certainly not going to be doing flips with it when I'm FPVing I don't want to do that with my machine after all the work I put into this uh, so um, what I had done is I had laid a bead of silicone on the bottom of the of the uh, dual board here 
and took this cover off, put it on a very flat horizontal surface, happens to be a countertop in the kitchen, and then uh, with the antenna screwed in, here, screwed in nice and tight, not really tight but snug, I got that really straight, and then I eyeballed it from the side, from this direction, from that direction to make sure this was vertical so I knew it wasn't crooked one way or another this I used 100% silicone to use um, as an adhesive and I found that it actually sticks very well to this and this so it's a good adhesive even though it's silicone it's supposed to be a sealant to seal leaks basically not not adhere things together but it makes a good a good glue if you will in this case so that got the board level and it got this connector vertical so that the props um, are missing this by the same amount and it's not much it might be about half an inch but it's enough so um, this back is very small um, this transmitter is probably uh, less than an inch and a half by less than an inch in fact I don't have to guess when I have a ruler so it's about seven eighths of an inch wide, and uh, it's, so it's very small. I used surface mount technology, and I made my own, designed my own circuit, um, made my own circuit board, soldered my own uh, surface mount components on there, and it worked the first time. So I was very happy with that, um, and I dedicated it to this transmitter. I'm not going to use it for anything else. I can always make another one. Um, you can, of course, buy these also. Um, I'm sure, um, but I wanted to make my own, so that was fun. So that's how that is assembled. And then, of course, when this is on the quad, so that's glued on the top, and then I'll I'll slip it on, snap it in place, and then I run some some of this heavy duty tape. I like to call it string tape. So it's got embedded fiberglass, and and it's very sticky. So I run that down to um, the frame of the quad. So, so the tape is holding this down to to the quad. It's not it's not just holding the transmitter down to the shell. It's actually holding it all together. So that that helps to kind of stiffen everything and make it stable. And of course, on the cover, you want to make sure you don't cover this hole. This is the hole that has the sponge on the reverse side. That's your air, your barometric pressure sensor, air pressure sensor. So when you're doing uh, constant altitude flight or altitude hold, that's where it's sensing. Basically, that's where it's sensing the barometric pressure. So you don't want to cover that with anything. So the video transmitter sits here at the back and doesn't block it. Um, and it actually, I don't think, blocks the LED either. You can actually see the LED with this design, this layout. Otherwise, uh, no other modifications to that. So on this quad, um, one of the things I wanted to do was use my high-tech Aurora 9 transmitter. And so I wanted to put a compatible transmitter on board. And that is, in this case, a Minima. It's very small, lightweight. Uh, I think this is a PCM connection. Or P PPM, maybe it's PPM. Um, and that wires over to here on the board. So those are the two ends of that connector. And basically, I took this board out a while back and replaced it with a new board um, because of the battery issue where you connect the battery and sometimes it doesn't reset. And so they've added a resistor. They added a resistor here, I think right there, to basically drain this capacitor's uh, energy. So it resets every time I plug the battery in. Now it works great. I think this is board revision 53. Uh, I'm not seeing it at the moment, but it's probably an old board now. That was probably close to a year ago. But when I had the board out, um, I was able to run these wires um, between the board and the frame, and I could not do that. Even with tweezers, I had a hard time trying to fish those 
all those wires through there. So I basically kind of uh, had to think this through and pull all the wires through as I assembled the board back onto the frame. I think I probably did it two or three times to get it the way it is now, where I liked it. Um, so there's some uh, power connections here. This is a low voltage alarm because this Minima does, is not a high-tech product. It doesn't have the telemetry built in for low battery voltage. Um, so I wanted to carry this on board and so I needed to run the the zero volts and the 1S and the 2S connection. You can call this ground if you'd like. So that's that's a, these are taps off of the battery. So these yellow, black, red wires run underneath the board. They come over here. They come over here to the power connection. And so the battery, when the battery plugs in under here, there's four connections, and actually these two middle ones are shorted by this PC board. So you can imagine it's more like three connections. And so I've got the yellow, black, red tapped on to basically the left pin, either one of the center pins, and then the red. Yep, the red is right here on the on this right-hand pin. Fairly difficult to solder because I've got all these other wires in here. What are all these for? And they're kind of big. And they don't look big when you start, but when you start putting them in a small you know, environment like this, they get quite crowded. That was pretty difficult to solder. Um, I think I used tape to hold the wires in place while I soldered. So these red and black, there's two red and black pair here. Those run, they run underneath, which you probably can't see, but they run underneath here out to these connectors. So these connectors are both, the way I have this set up, um, they're wired to the, I guess I should have mentioned that, um, right here. Those are wired to the outside pins. So I've got seven, I've got two S or about seven and a half volts across those two pins. So I've got seven and a half volts here. One of those plugs into our video, or it plugs into the back and then the video transmitter. The other one, I think, is spare at this point. I don't know why I ran two at this point, at this point, but I think I've only got the one in use normally. I don't know if I was going to potentially add some LED lights or what, but I ran two of them. Maybe it was because it was so difficult to assemble the darn thing anyway. Um, so uh, that's what those are for. And the way I have this transmitter mounted is this is actually velcroed to the inside of the leg and the reason for that is it's just easy to remove if I ever need to change it or anything and then I've got this um, one thing you might want to do on some of these receivers just have the wire soldered and it's hanging loose well that can fatigue with vibration uh, so I've added some more silicone there to support it and then I use the velcro to position it as high as it'll go so that the antenna is protected down in the leg here. Um, so uh, to prevent the problem of the propeller coming off and I was trying these Gemfan 6045's because the root is much stronger and thicker and it should be more resistant to breakage although I've never broken one of the original props. Um, they have reinforcing uh, webbing and they, they apparently they break pretty easily so I was trying to test these when my propeller came off and all this damage happened. What I'm going to do to solve that is add a little bit of I'm going to add a little bit of thread locker blue which is a removable um, thread sealant so it won't unscrew unless I want it to and then I should have a flying quad again which hopefully I will get out and try soon I'd like to be FPVing as soon as possible so that's the rundown of all of the changes I've made on this 
Um, oh, there's one more, more thing. So the way I set the battery and camera up is I first plug in the battery, then I seat it in the battery tray. And this is kind of hard to do. I leave the antenna connected all the time, so I kind of hold this in my hand when I'm doing it. And then I've got Velcro on the back of the battery, and that matches up with the Mobius. So I don't have to guess where it goes. Um, Position-wise, it, it's so the center of gravity doesn't change. So I just line up the Velcro, and that positions the camera. And then I use this roll of Velcro to hold the camera. What I learned, this is double-sided Velcro, and I ran it under between the tray and the board when I had the board apart. So again, it took me several times to get all this to work. But that's not really what I found out was best. That works, but with the video shooting forward uh, horizontally, you end up basically with half the screen as sky all the time. And that's, not, I found not to be what I like, so I ended up trying some wedges. This is a little foam wedge, it weighs very much like nothing. And so I put a little Velcro on that to get it positioned. And so, you know, I can put the Velcro around that. And the problem is with this, and I tried it, it was facing down too much. So you can see that is quite an angle. So I ended up going with this angle and this one. fits in there really well and then I kind of compress the fo I compress the foam a little bit and so I get quite a good wrap of, of velcro on there and I've never had it come loose um, so you can see you can see here how much down angle I've got maybe that's about 15 degrees um, it takes a little while to get used to, but so does anything, like FPV is definitely different, but it turns out that it uh, works really well for me, so I plan on keep keeping that uh, the way it is. Never had the camera slip out either, that's another reason this Velcro is in there, so the camera can't slip out. Uh, I haven't had any issues with, with the camera at all, so that is, that is it.